Get ready, it's a surefire time to buy. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today. And while investors don't need another reason to buy the dip, one investment bank signal is flashing green. And they say it works 100% of the time, except when it doesn't. Meanwhile, bond investors are wondering, when is their time coming or is inflation going to get the best of them? Let's pick the story up where we head over to Bloomberg that headlines that JP Morgan strategists see surefire sign it's time to buy stocks as their VIX buy signal has proven 100% accurate. Well, that is outside of recessions. Let's take a look and see where they're going with this as JP Morgan strategists have identified what they say is a near bulletproof indicator to strengthen their argument the stock market is poised to rally. And the buy signal is triggered when the CBOE volatility or VIX index rises by more than 50% of its one month moving average, which it did last January 25th, according to strategists led by Misav Matlinka. The indicator has proven 100% accurate outside of recessions over the last three decades. And we believe equities still offer upside, and that is that the cycle is far from over, the London-based strategist wrote in his February 7th note. In, a, in addition to the VIX signal, they look for more gains in earnings, a bottom in Chinese activity, and say investor sentiment has become too negative as of late. Because, well, when investors are negative, it seems to be that's the best time to buy. But maybe investors are negative for good reason. Let's continue on with the story because here you can see in this chart that JP Morgan's fixed buy signal with a 100% hitch ratio. Well, that is outside of recessions, but we'll admit that because, well, that doesn't really matter. And they say, look, if you follow these signals, you've got a 100% chance of being right, except when you're actually wrong and, well, you get slaughtered. But let's take a look at a much easier signal to look at. And that says on my chart that when the VIX gets over 30, somewhere between that and 36, well, JP Morgan's signal would probably trigger somewhere around these parts where I circled here in red. Except you'll notice there's a couple parts where I marked red X's. And that would be, well, where it doesn't work. And that's a problem with any a system that it works until it doesn't. And we're playing with the VIX. Well, it can get really ugly. So JP Morgan, let's hope that you're right and there isn't a recession on the uh, coming. But if there is, well, your strategy is about to find another down year. But let's keep going with the story because data shows the VIX signal has been triggered 21 times since 1990, and with the S&P 500 index gained an average 9% in the six months afterwards. Prior to January, the last time the indicator flashed was in November, since when stocks have fallen globally, and markets have remained choppy this week. The only time a false signal was produced was during the 2008 global financial crisis, as the S&P index was still down 33% six months later. And again, it works until it doesn't. But if you're looking for a strategy as a long-term investor that works, well, be sure to check out Portfolio Shield. There's a link in the corner in the description below. You'll be glad you did. Now let's continue on because what's going on in the economy and how it's affecting the bond market, as many investors are wondering as they look at their overall portfolio and starting to ask, well, when is this going to turn around or is inflation going to get the best of them? Well, that's because many people don't understand how the global monetary system works, but now you're going to. Let's continue on where Wall Street Journal headlines the economic recovery pushed the 2021 U.S. trade deficit to record levels as Americans shifted spending to goods imported from overseas. And the December deficit in trade of goods and services grew by 1.8% to a seasonally adjusted $80.7 billion, the Commerce Department said Tuesday, just less than the record deficit of $80.8 billion in September. The full-year trade deficit for 2021 increased 27% to $859.1 billion, larger than the previous record of $763.53 billion in 2006. An annual trade balance records records date back to 1960. And here you can see the sharp increase in trade deficit comes as the U.S. economy continues to recover strongly from the pandemic-induced slump in 2020. As American consumers have spent heavily on imported goods such as computers, game machines, furniture, flush with stimulus money, while less willing to splurge on travels and dining out due to health concerns. But as we know, the stimulus, well, that's over. Most of it ended last year, and now there isn't much left in consumer bank accounts to spend. And that's the problem with the story, but yet imports are still flooding in. And how does that relate to the bond market? Well, let's keep going because it'll make a lot of sense on how inflation ties together with this as well. 
The increases in December exports and imports suggest global supply chain problems are easing, said Andrew Hunter, a senior U.S. economist for Capital Econ- Economics. A research firm, trade in both direction appears to have benefited from easing congestion at U.S. ports, although it still remains pretty backlogged here in California, towards the end of last year, he wrote in a research note on Tuesday. He noted that the widening deficit will continue to push down the overall overall economic growth rate during the first quarter of this year. Well, Andrew, you've got that absolutely right, because when you take the trade deficit here in blue, shown as a trade balance of goods and services, and you overlay gross domestic process on a year-over-year basis, what you find is when the trade deficit widens, well, U.S. GDP growth falls and is a simple story of when you import more than you export. Well, that is not good for your GDP numbers, suggesting that weaker growth for the U.S. economy is indeed ahead. But let's keep going because what's going on here is we're not seeing consumption. All of a sudden, we're seeing retail inventories start to spike despite still reports of shortages in some areas. We're now starting to see surpluses in others. You might be wondering what all this has to do with perhaps today's treasury auctions and demand for bonds. Well, today we had a three-year treasury note auction and was met with pretty strong demand despite higher interest rates. Now, most people would think that with higher interest rates and inflation, nobody wants to buy bonds. But outside the U.S., people want to buy them and they want to buy them in droves. Check this out. We saw one of the highest, or I think tied for the highest take at 68.5% from foreign or indirect bidders in today's auction, taking over 34 billion of the $50 billion offering, which makes you wonder is why would they be buying U.S. debt when interest rates and inflation seem to be rising? Well, that's not how the system works. Let's keep going with the story. Because one tell was the U.S. dealer inventory, which the New York Fed keeps track of. And as of last week, there was almost a minus $7 billion in three-year treasury notes sitting at dealer inventories because so many people are short the bond market, well, that the dealers ran out of bonds. And so that we already knew there was demand from the dealers. But what about this foreign demand? Why are they so eager to buy U.S. debt? Well, Because again, once you understand how the global monetary system works, it starts to make perfect sense. Let's keep going here because now we're going to take a look at the trade deficit in blue overlaid with the 30-year treasury yield. And I'm using the 30-year just because it's more exaggerated than some of the shorter term uh, twos and threes and fives. And what you'll notice is as a trade deficit widens by heading down, well, rates tend to fall. In fact, and then during recessions when the trade deficit blows off the other direction and collapses as economic if conditions deteriorate, yields crash. And then as the trade deficit again heads lower, you'll notice a trend lower in yields. And now the question you might ask is, why is that happening? Well, let's take a look at the relationship between the trade deficit and the consumer price index shown on a year over year basis. And you'll look at this and say, Steve, I don't quite see the relationship. Well, let's invert the consumer price index. And now you should see a very good relationship is that when we export more than we import, well, that happens during periods of high inflation. Now, you might wonder, is there a causation here? And the answer is not really. It's pretty simple. If you are a foreign producer, whether goods or services, whatever it is, and you notice there's high inflation in another market, say the U.S., and prices are high and your prices are relatively low, and what would you want to do? Well, you would want to get your low price goods into their market to grab market share and make money. And so that's why when you see inflation rising in the U.S. as domestic production rises in price, that we see a big surge in foreign demand in terms of foreign goods flooding into the country. And so those two things happen not because of each other, it's just because there is, it's not as a direct correlation, but higher prices here mean that there's an arbitrage opportunity for foreign producers to import goods. And so when that happens, what do the foreign importers get in exchange? Well, they get dollars, and that is probably the key point here, because what do they do with those dollars? Well, those dollars are no different than the ones in yours or my pocket. They don't earn any interest. They just sit there. So what do foreign governments and foreign banks and foreign producers do with their excess dollars? They buy treasury securities to earn an interest on their dollar savings, because in a dollar global dollar system, Unlike a gold system, when we were the gold standard, people wanted to hold gold. Well, in a dollar system, you want to hold dollars, but dollars don't pay any interest. 
U.S. Treasury securities do. And if you need your dollars, well, those Treasury securities are liquid and you can sell. So when the trade deficit starts to widen and hit big wide levels like now, there's persistent and ongoing demand from foreign investors to buy U.S. Treasury securities. And it's not a function of inflation. It's not a function of rising interest rates. It's they're just looking to earn interest on their dollar savings. But how does this story always end? Because what we're being told is there's all this demand from the US, but the US is not designed to handle high rates of inflation. As you can see, as part of the global monetary system, we need to be exporting inflation because when we import it, well, it's a huge problem. As most Americans expect higher inflation in the next six months, according to Bloomberg, about half in a Gallup poll say high prices are causing hardship. Two thirds of respondents say the economy it's actually getting worse. And here you can see as inflation impact, as recent price increases caused any financial hardship, well, for those who are making their household incomes under 40,000, 20% of them say they're in severe hardship, whereas half of them are saying a moderate hardship. And amazingly, only a third say they haven't been impacted. But look at those who are between 40 and 100,000, only about 10% of them are saying severe hardship, but almost 50% of them are suggesting a moderate hardship, whereas those making over 100,000, only about a third of them are feeling some sort of hardship. And what does that translate into every time? It translates into less spending. So what's happening now is without fiscal stimulus to spur demand, and higher prices here in the US, you're seeing fisc or imports coming in that are going onto shelves, and then that's going to cause inventories to build, and then you're going to see a recession because US consumers cannot afford these higher prices. This is how the cycle works, as it happens every time. But that's why, despite all of these claims that there's no demand for US government debt, when there's high inflation, well, yes, there is huge demand. It comes from outside the country, and that's what we saw in today's report. I'm Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Bye now. The content of this video is prized educational information is not intended to provide investor advice. It doesn't be construed as a recognition or solicitation by our security securities financial instrument or participate in a particular training strategy. This video was paired by Steve Van Meter. Personal capacity, business expresses fear that I do not affect the view of Alice Financial Advice, Inc. or Steve Van Meter Financial.